What about the Kurds? What about the Kurds? All of a sudden, everybody gives a damn about the Kurds. I don't remember anybody talking about four years ago, hey, let's invade Syria to go save the Kurds. All of a sudden, it's all about the Kurds today. Well, the Kurds, I love the Kurds, so I am glad that everybody's finally got on board with that, okay? So, the Kurdistan looked into more research on this, so the objections is bullshit. I have policy prescriptions. We can, A, work with the government of Assad, make sure he doesn't touch him, and then also just, you know, give him an ultimatum. Hey, look, Turkey and Assad, I'll go ahead and do it uh, right now. Hey, Turkey or Assad, if you fuck with the Kurds, we're going to fuck you guys up. So don't fuck with the Kurds, okay? Turkey, Assad, Syria. So there's, you know, a little bit of area. Let me let me describe Kurdistan. I'm also going to, there's a independence vote. So they actually, they voted to become independent uh, nine, uh, 2017, so two years ago. Kurdistan in northern Iraq voted for independence. 93% of them voted for independence. 3.3 million votes. That's more than Kentucky's general election. So 3.3 million votes, and then 93% of them said that they wanted northern Iraq to be its own nation, to be Kurdistan. Now, Kurdistan is an ethnic place. So the ethnic Kurds, they're their own people. I think they're Muslim. I don't really know. I don't know much anything about the Kurds except for America's foreign policy. So we've had to deal with the Kurds several times. Sometimes we've defended the Kurds. Sometimes we have left the Kurds to fight for themselves. So the uh, Iraq government after they had announced their independence, right, so Kurdistan, northern Iraq, Kurdistan, had said that they want to be their own country, but there is like one section which is solidly Kurdistan, and then there is like another section. So if you look at the thing, it's like dark red for a, a big majority of Kurdistan, but then there's this little pink strip, and the little pink strip is Iraq invading Kurdistan and saying, no, no, you don't get all this area, you just get that area. So they pushed them back, uh, which is sad because the vote had extended out to those regions too. So the Kurdistan, the ethnic Kurds aren't just in northern Iraq, they're in Turkey. The biggest bulk of the Kurd, uh, the Kurdistan, is in Turkey. So that's, if you look at Kurdistan, it's a big blob, you know, it's one solid blob. Most of it is in Turkey. Some's in northern Iraq, most of it is in Turkey. And then you got this little bitty tiny little, the, um, the northeastern part of Syria, just on this little tippy corner, the northeastern part of Syria, you got some Kurds. So you got some Kurds, and I've heard they've been doing development, they got water, they've been building schools and houses, so they're, you know, getting into civilization, and they're doing, you know, kick ass. So even though the Assad's government's going to be mad at them for fighting against him for so long, he's going to have to, you know, wreck the with them or uh, get fucked up by us, you know? The, if anything, that would only drag me into the goddamn fucking thing. I don't want to be dragged into it. I want us to withdraw, so I want us to go to Kurds, to the area of the Kurds at the very least, so that gets us out of Syria except for the Kurd dominated area. And there is one tiny other section, so there's northern part of Syria, northeast part of Syria, about like, you know, yay big, and then there's just like, you know, off of Turkey, it kind of dips into Syria a little bit. I'm not as worried about that area as I'm worried about right next to Iraq. So, Kurdistan, you know, if it, uh, if we invaded Syria, because that's what we would st we're still, we didn't get out of Syria, right, if we're still with the Kurds, but if uh, something had happened where we had to fight with Assad some more to defend the Kurds, uh, they could become refugees, right? They, we control the, the empire, right? We control Iraq and Kurdistan. Now, aren't we in there? Don't we have military bases? And uh, hopefully, I think our policy prescription is just be with the Kurds until they become their own country, until they become their own nation. So I think we should actually help them realize, you know, their dreams of being an autonomous, independent country. Yeah, let's make the country, let's make the Kurds their own fucking country. They would be like, we would be like France, right? In our American Revolution, we had to fight against the goddamn British imperialist sons of bitches. Those British imperialists thought they could come into our country, invade our country country, invade our sovereign nation, and oppress all of us, and we were like, get the fuck out of here, and France helped us do that, so when Kurdistan becomes their own country, we'll be the France of, you know, their revolution, of their independence movement, so I would be for that, I'd be for sticking with the Kurds up until the point of their independence movement, in hopes 
that our friendship, that they'll just be overwhelmed with our friendship, that they'll want our presence there. They'll want us to be able to trade with each other, maybe military bases, maybe they'll want some of our war planes, maybe they just want a U.S. embassy, they just want to trade, peaceful trade, no military, anything. So ultimately, it's their nation, they get, you know, veto power on anything and everything that's over there, but once we get our bases in there, right, once we go carve a little piece of property out, we don't ever leave. So, I think helping the Kurds would be a good thing overall. It's a step in the right direction. I am an isolationist, so really I question, you know, 900 military bases in 150 countries, but, you know, are we just going to bring them all back immediately? Just one day we're an empire, and then the next day we're just, you know, a republic? I would like that, but, you know, maybe it might take 30 days. So, uh, I think 30 days is plenty of time. 30 days is plenty of time to get a withdrawal. We got out of Somalia, you know. We had a timetable to get out of Somalia. We got out of Vietnam in a couple of days. So, 30 days, it's almost too many days. I mean, how many days does it take to get the fuck out of some place? All you have to do is, you know, walk out of the thing, right? Just walk across the border. Just get in a car. Drive across the border. Get in a plane. Fly across the border. Get in a boat. And boat across the border. So, it's really just a matter of, you know, uh, wanting to get over the border, right? And wanting to get out and wanting to go home. So, a plane, plane, what, four hours? They're basically four hours, a four-hour plane trip, and plane trips can come back, and there's only 2,000 of them. So what is that, 100, uh, you know, 100 per plane, 100 times 20, just 20 planes. So we just need to get 20 planes in there in order to get everybody out. That seems like that's very easy and doable, and uh, I actually trust Donald to withdraw the troops much more than maintaining a war. So, yes, go ahead. Uh, all that withdrawal. And uh, I'm sure people knew how to, even if, you know, it was being bungled and they lost half the troops or something, they don't know where they went, they, they would eventually figure out, you know, how to get home. So I, I am totally uh, confident that the U.S. military can withdraw from Syria. What about the Kurds? What about the Kurds? So uh, I wanted to mention a couple things about the Kurds. We are... You know, we have not always been with the Kurds. So Saddam Hussein, he's going to get executed, right? We invaded Saddam Hussein, and then there's this big public trial afterwards. We captured him, and we put him in this trial. And the reason why he got murdered was because he gassed the Kurds. So it wasn't because, he, you know, he killed a bunch of people, just 133 people. So really it wasn't about the wars or any of his war crimes or the shit that he's done. It was like 133 Kurds. So the gassing of the Kurds is the reason, the justification for Saddam Hussein's execution, his legal justification, and uh, we supported the Kurds against Saddam Hussein. So actually Saddam Hussein was uh, gassing the Kurds because the Kurds had fought against Saddam. So it's been like, you know, back and forth this entire time. But the 1970s, is that what, Carter or Ford? We were supporting the Kurds. We f supported the Kurds against Saddam Hussein, so we were friends with the Kurds. But then after the first Iraq war, we left the Kurds. Bill Clinton gave Turkey weapons and then left the Kurds to fend for themselves. So we were given Turkey weapons as they used them on the Kurds. So that's the 90s. So we kind of turned our back on the Kurds in the 90s. But in the 70s, we were friends with the Kurds, right? And, uh, and so, yeah, that's what I think about the Kurds. What about the Kurds? Let's protect the damn Kurds. There's a recent referendum for the Kurdish independence. Let's get them some independence. Let's get them some autonomy. That's a nation that's already been created. That nation's already there. All you have to do, the state is already there. All you have to do is just draw the fucking lines. Draw the border, right? And actually, you'd be taking a part of a piece of Turkey. You'd take a huge chunk of Turkey. So really, I, you know what? Poke Turkey, the big old fucking stick. Come on, Turkey. You want to fuck with the Kurds? Kurds, Turkey, please, Turkey, fuck with the Kurds, because then you'll be tripling or quadrupling their nation. Right now, they just got a sliver on the top of northern Iraq, and that's it. But if you add Turkey's land into it, my God, you just quadrupled, you just made the uh, Kurdistan so much bigger. So please, Turkey, you know, no, no, don't please. I don't want to like provoke them, but I'm just saying, like, uh, I am ready as an American. Uh, as a person that's in solidarity with uh, independence movements, with, uh, you know, citizens, uh, uh, self-determination, and, you know, as a member of the empire, um, to help Kurdistan, to fight with Kurdistan, to be in solidarity with Kurdistan, in order to, you know, make sure that the Iranians, Russians, Syrians, and, you know, Turkeyans, every fucking, nobody, nobody, hey, everybody, the whole world, 
the, back off the Kurds. If the Kurds are the Muslims, the Kurds could be like our Israel, our Muslim Israel, right? Instead of just helping a Jewish nationality over there, we could help a Muslim nationality. And not just fucking Saudi Arabia, like evil fucking people. The Kurds are bad asses. The Peshmerga, those are some bad bitches. You don't get more better bitch than a female Peshmerga Kurdish warrior. So, of course, we got to protect the Kurds. If Turkey bombs the Kurds, we fucking, we'll fuck Turkey up. They're bad at NATO anyways. They're right on Palestine. But protect the Kurds, okay? Protect the Kurds. Protect the Kurds. The U.S. military should invite the Kurds to march out of the nation with them. So if they're still rebelling and they want to, I don't take out Assad, it's not going to work. Just walk out with us and we'll protect your homeland. We'll protect your towns. We'll protect your, you know, where your, uh, where your mother and wife and children sleep. So Donald was slightly less war hawkish than Hillary. Perhaps why I should get out of this goddamn fucking war altogether. But Hillary was all about pushing up against Russia, making sure we contained Russia. It's all about, you know, the geopolitical world hegemony. It's all about Kissinger. Kissinger Killery. Kissinger Killery just wants to make sure that we're the lone superpower. That we're the world's premier superpower. And nobody can fuck with us, even if we're right or wrong. And I just find that such fucking bullshit for many reasons. In Haiti, you had Leclerc, when he saw he was losing the war in Haiti, because he went to, Napoleon went to re-enslave the Haitians, so Napoleon, the traitor to the revolution, the French Revolution, he went to re-enslave the Haitian people, and when they found out they, they were going to lose the war, they said, well, let's just wipe everybody out and then ship brand new Africans in from Africa. So they thought that genocide, complete wiping out, was better than to say that they made a mistake, that they wasted all this time and effort on a war, to ever say uncle, to ever say that they lost. Nope, even when there was, you know, just ten fuckers left there sitting there saying, nope, we can still wipe everybody out. No, that's fucking crazy, and that's fucked up. That's what we did in Vietnam. We were on the wrong side in Vietnam. So the goddamn Nazis are the fucking enemies. The Confederates are the enemies. The British imperialists are the fucking enemies. And the Viet Cong and Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi Jane, Jane Fonda was right. Jane Fonda was on the right side of history. It turns out North Vietnamese are the South Vietnamese. The Vietnamese people are the Vietnamese. They know who they are. They've been there for 5,000 years. It's a nationalist movement. It's not just communist. It was nationalist. They're goddamn fucking Vietnamese. And uh, the Guatemalans are Mayan people. And the Kurds are, you know, Kurdish. The Kurdish people. So, I wrote down some of the things that could happen, right? They're saying that the emboldened Assad, ISIS could be revived, Russia's happy, and Iran's happy, so now that they get greater control over that. The principle that Putin was talking about was just that they're a sovereign nation, and they are a sovereign nation, and we should invade sovereign nations. So, and what do we do when a nuclear power invades a sovereign nation after we invaded it? Well, fuck, you can't, you know, nuke us another nuclear power. You just have to, you know, accept it. And so, if anything, it's a good thing that they're kind of checking us, uh, because if they weren't, I don't know. So, um, I believe in the principle of we should not invade a sovereign nation. Get the United Nations approval. Get Congress's approval, because without Congress's approval, you're not even being constitutional. It's illegal. And without the United Nations approval, that's, you're breaking international law. Why do we even have the United Nations if we're not going to use it to, you know, stop war? Well, that's the point. The greatest generation, we killed all them fucking Nazis, and after we finished killing a whole shit ton of fucking Nazis, the greatest generation said, you know what? That was a little too close. We should not allow the Nazis to kill all those people. Let's, uh, let's have a United Nations, so that way these Nazis will never fucking pop up again. So, yeah, we'll, we, we'll protect the Kurds. Iraq is in the Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization is Mesopotamia, Iraq. So, we are undoing, you know, the cradle of civilization is right there. So, we got to be very careful with that. Hajin is the last town on the Euphrates River. So, ISIS being revived, I don't buy it, I, I just don't, if they, if they do, if, everybody's fighting ISIS, so, I mean, why would, everybody's fighting the terrorists, right, it's like everybody, Iran and Russia is against us, because they're on Assad's side, and we're against Assad, but we're all fighting the terrorists, so, you know, uh, it, it seems like everybody else could continue to fight ISIS if they popped back up. And it, Assad would be emboldened, so fuck Assad. I mean, if there's still some, 
I don't know, covert CIA plan to take him out. I wouldn't be against that. But uh, if you keep it out of the White House, right? If you if you fuck up, then we're going to disavow you. Um, yeah. So, really, you know, liberals, get your fucking heads out of your asses, you fucking liberal fucks. Jesus Christ. I mean, we got to make the right choices. If we fought for Ho Chi Minh for North Vietnam, we would have fought for the revolution against the French imperialist colonizing sons of bitches. And Vietnam would have lobbed us for it. We would have been on the right side of history if we would have fought for the Viet Cong, Ho Chi Minh, North Vietnam. Patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel, says Emma Goldman. And actually, it's really easy to get people whipped up into a war frenzy. And this is Hitler. This is Goebbels, you know, Hitler's Goebbels. Goebbels says, all you got to do is just point out an enemy and then declare everybody for their lack of patriotism. So if I just say enemy, Canada is the enemy, right? Blame Canada. If uh, Canada is the enemy and you don't believe me, I'm the president. I just named Canada the enemy. What are you, against America? What are you, Canadian son of a bitch? You Canuck son of a bitch? You Canuck fuck? Why don't you go suck a Canuck fuck fucking duck, you fucking Canuck suck duck fuck? You know? And if that's, you know, that's how easy it is to start a war. So it's just, so it's much harder, I guess, just, it seems like I'm not just opposing the war, but it's like i got to fight against human nature. i got to fight against human nature, too. So if the president says that that person is our enemy, you'd want to believe him, but what if he's not telling the truth, you know? What if it's some fucking bullshit? What if the facts are wrong? What if it's, there's some, you know, sinister shit going on in the background there that you don't really know what's up? It's, uh, I would rather be safe than sorry. If we're being invaded by a country, okay, let's hurry up and get, you know, let's get a move on. But Iraq wasn't threatening us. Syria wasn't threatening us. These countries are threatening us. And we keep intervening. And there's, you know, like I said the before, the genocide in Myanmar. There's the genocide in Yemen. There's a refugee crisis in Venezuela that's being created by the United States government right now. And so if we're not talking about any of these other refugee crises or these uh, genocidal humanitarian crises in which we should intervene, we should go into Myanmar. If we're a good empire, we should save those fucking Rohingya Muslims. If we're a good empire, then we should save uh, the Yemeni people. And it, we don't even have to do anything for the Yemeni people. Just tell fucking Saudi Arabia to knock it the fuck off or we're not going to be friends no more. Just don't protect... Saudi Arabia's fucking murder spree. They're just murdering willy-nilly, Saudi Arabia is, but because they're friends with us, the whole world's just watching as Yemen is just a fucking war zone. 85,000 people have died so far in Yemen. A lot of them of starvation and cholera's coming back, and a lot of these old diseases are coming back. So, Hillary, she's a, a warmonger. She would have stayed in Syria forever. This is a great moment. This is a signal for change. We could also show, you know, as progressives, uh, offer a different vision. What kind of world can we, instead of being an empire, what can we do? We could go through the United Nations, okay? I'm an isolationist, which just means let's just take care of our 50 states and our five colonies. Let's just take care of, you know, Kentucky and Florida and New York and Alaska. Let's just take care of us, this republic, these, you know, 50 nifty United States. We're trying to take care of the entire world. Let's take care of us first. That's isolationist. There's detente where you keep, you know, pressure on Russia. And there, there's different, there's only like four or five, you know, different world uh, policies. But they sit there and say that the us being the empire is the one and only fucking way that we should do it. I think it's dangerous. I think it's stupid. We're going to overextend ourselves. We're going to be the premier enemy. We're letting that genocide happen that goes on. And then if we, later on we invade that country, they could say, well, you didn't give a shit about the genocide. And they'd be right. So either we need to, you know, buck up and go after these genocides, every single fucking genocide. Let's go into, you know, we're all over Africa right now. Uh, is Donald Trump, Donald Trump is the one waging this war. So are we gonna, we're going to trust him to be the commander in chief to have 20 shadow wars all over Africa, but we're not going to trust him to do a little tiny withdrawal out of one of those many nations that were, were publicly bombing seven countries. So there's seven countries that there's not a shadow war. We just, you know, we're at, these are our enemies, North Korea, Afghanistan, uh, uh, Yemen, Lebanon, Libya. So we need to hold our warmonger leaders responsible for bad wars. A lot of people want to sit there and say, support the troops, support the troops, right? 
but is that just propaganda? Because if we're not going to hold our warmonger leaders, your John McCain's, your Papa Bush's, your uh, Hillary Clinton's, if you're not going to hold the warmonger leaders responsible for bad wars, then support the troops is just propaganda for support the war. Because the leaders really aren't even the ones doing the deed. It's the troops. So when you say support the troops, you mean support the war? Because if we don't put an end to war, war is going to put an end to us. And more than just America, we're 50 states, we're 50 nifty un United States. We're also freedom. We're democracy. So that's the idea. We market ourselves to the rest of the world. We are freedom and democracy. We don't have freedom and democracy in our government schools. So we really don't know what the fuck we're doing with freedom and democracy, but eventually, after a while, we get shit right, right? We figured out, we, after World War II, we got into war, we fought the Nazis, we ended slavery, you know, there's other shit, eventually we get things right, we might be a little late to the game, so, you know, go, Joe, go, G.I. Joe, be a good force in the world, be a great force in this world, uh, but a part of it is, you know, being against imperialism, Mark Twain was against imperialism, George Washington said don't get into foreign entanglements, so the father of the country said, don't be imperialist. We weren't an empire until 1898. So we've only been an empire for the last 120 years. It's not inevitable. We don't have to be the only empire. I think it's a lot of responsibility, and it overextends ourselves and puts us in lots of different places. And it seems like it would be just easy as fuck for something to fuck up. Somebody to fuck up, somebody to do something bad to somebody, and now they're going to blame the United States on the, uh, you know, on, on the shit we did, and they should. But if we went through the United Nations and the whole world agreed with us, right? The whole world agreed that we should go into Myanmar. So when we went into Myanmar, you can't be mad at us, the whole world, you know. But if we were like, oh, Myanmar's got oil, well, we need to intervene right now. Well, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's, uh, let's try to be a republic. You know, people will say that it's a republic if you want to keep it. It's, it's an empire. It's not a fucking republic. It's an empire. <laughs> Give me a break. It's a federal empire, a federalist, because we got state and federal government.